Hello everyone, my name is Sabrina and I'm an artist living in Little Rock, Arkansas. In this video, I will be showing you my favorite art books, apps, resources, videos, just all that stuff that has helped me improve as an artist through the years. Some of the books I'm about to mention I don't even have anymore because I accidentally left them the last time I moved, so I don't have them with me, so I'm so sorry I won't be able to show you, but I do still have some that I can like flip through and show you and stuff. The first book that I'm going to mention will always be my first choice when somebody asks me what my favorite instructional art book is, and that book is Color and Light by James Gurney. We all know him, we all love him. He's absolutely amazing. He even has like a YouTube channel too. And he is so creative with just even like editing his videos and then also his painting and just, yeah, please go watch his videos and get this book because it has helped me like so much. He's like literally so wholesome and skilled and I'm so grateful that he was able to condense this information. This book like really opened my eyes to understand why things look the way they look. He goes over concepts like atmospheric perspective, color constancy, subsurface scattering and if you don't know what any of those are like he explains it very well in the book. He also talks about different types of light and how they look when they mix and how they affect how certain objects look. You will learn like how to alter the mood of a piece with just lighting. So yeah uh, please pick up this book if you can. It is filled to the brim with juicy art information that your little artist brain will just soak up like a sponge. The second book I'm going to be talking about is Pot Painting by Camilla Dorico. I think that's how you pronounce her name. I love this book. I love her art so, so much. She is actually the reason why I started painting with water-soluble oils, specifically the Holbein ones. I think it's so interesting to see the process behind uh, someone's paintings and how they got there and how they started. It's really cool. It's really satisfying to see the studio supplies and personality of an artist. And it's also just like a really fun book to read. That type of stuff is super inspiring to me. The rest of the reading material I'm about to mention comes in magazine form to be specific, but they are just as informational and inspirational as a full-blown book. Now these I do have with me. <laughs> this one right here, Anatomy Essentials, is essential. It is part of the Imagine FX bookazine series. When I picked this up at Barnes & Noble, I did not realize it was going to help me as much as it did. I'm not even sure you can get this anymore, but there is a downloadable PDF you can get from, what's it called? MagazineCafeStore.com. I learned things like gesture, form, specific parts of the body, and they make the information in here like super digestible. I don't really favor anatomy books that are too technical. I'm not really like a huge fan of knowing every single single muscle's name. If you want to get into figure drawing and eventually being able to draw figures from memory, I highly recommend this book. So the next magazine is also a part of the Imagine FX line and it is Practical Painter. It has tutorials on how to use pencil, gouache, acrylic, oil, some charcoal stuff, and also really cool techniques that I have never heard of when I picked up this um, bookazine, I guess. They also have like a supplies list for each medium, so I think that's really cool. It is also very easily digestible like Anatomy Essentials. I mean, it kind of has like that same format since they're part of the same series, I guess. The last magazine I'm going to talk about is High Fructose. This one is purely for entertainment, but it is still so, so inspiring. I've collected several of these through the years, but every time I was at Barnes & Noble, I would pick one of these up. I would get so excited every time I saw the new cover out, and yeah. Every time I go through an art block, I like to sit down with a cup of coffee and skim through a few of these just to get like a little boost of inspiration. And it's also really cool to read the little stories on each artist and what made them to create the art that they create. And I just love seeing the meaning behind the type of art that's featured in these magazines. Reading about this type of stuff like makes me feel more validated as an artist. It's like, oh, their meaning is kind of, you know, similar to mine or they don't really have like a clear meaning on their art. And that's also fine because if it came from your brain and you have this urge to just let it out, then I think that could be considered art. Now I will be talking about apps on my iPad that I have used that have been super duper helpful. I'm gonna be talking about three and they are actually all like modeling apps. And when I say modeling, I don't mean like 
blender like 3d modeling i mean like you have a figure and you get to pose it type modeling <laughs> if you were at the point where you still can't draw a figure from your imagination it is totally okay to use reference but the problem is that you have to be mindful of the photos that you use as reference online because those could be copyrighted. Skelly is an amazing app if you need to model just a skeleton. I don't think it was free. I think I paid like $10 for it, which I think is totally worth it. It's just one time $10 fee. Just by using this app, like just by moving it around and kind of getting yourself familiar with the skeleton, like you already learn so much. You can pinch to zoom and you can pick certain parts and like rotate it and stuff. I've painted a few skeletons in my life and I think I almost always used this model as a reference. Another really great app is called Hansy. It's another like you start off with a model and you kind of like change it from there. But yeah, it's just pretty much for like hands and feet. I'm gonna try to show this to you like without the glare showing. But yeah, you can like rotate it like that and then you can click like the specific knuckle and then change it and stuff like that. I mean, we all know that drawing hands is a struggle in and of itself, so this really helps. And of course, if you don't feel like getting the app, like you can use your own hands as reference too. This one is really cool though because you can change the lighting and sometimes that's like hard to do if you're taking a picture in real life. The last app I'm going to talk about is called Magic Poser. I did have a free trial at some point. You can see just like all the different poses that I created. I haven't upgraded it yet, but I think for the upgraded version. So the Pro one is a $10 one-time fee and the Master is $14.99 per month. But yeah, I used it when I had my free trial and it really helped me you get to choose from different like body types and i think that's really cool the next thing that i'm going to mention is this really cool website called coolers.co it is an online color palette generator you don't even have to sign up or anything to use it you just have to click the space bar and a new palette will be generated for you you can even lock certain colors so that they stay there while the rest of the palette regenerates it can even create like a palette from a photo Pretty cool. I like it. Last but certainly not least, I'm going to be talking about YouTube channels that have helped me a lot. There are two that always come to mind. There's Proko and Marco Bucci. I have learned so much from just those two channels. Proko's video on the anatomy of an eye really just made everything click in my head. Marco Bucci has wonderful videos on color and light, kind of like the same stuff you would learn in the color and light book by james gurney there really is so much information you can learn on just youtube alone so on that note i'm gonna stop the video right here and urge you to go out and learn something new today not only should you observe but you should also apply those things remember like keep a sketchbook drawn every day it doesn't have to look good because remember you don't have to show it to anybody i hope you found this video helpful if you have any questions leave them down below um, if there's anything that you would like to add or if you want to include your favorite books resources apps youtube channels all that stuff yeah feel free to leave them down below let's start a conversation also i am almost to 200 subscribers and i am very excited about that i'm so close <laughs> Um, thank you for watching. Bye.